received confirmation that Dragon Age the Veil Guard will not look back at Dragon Age Origins or Dragon Age 2. The decisions you made in those games will not affect Dragon Age the Veil Guard whatsoever. And we have an absolutely, utterly ridiculous explanation from the game's creative director, John Epler, as to why that these those decisions will not impact the Veil Guard. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. Roll this up over at thatparkplace.com. And uh, Epler spoke with IGN, where he explained why the choices players made in Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2 uh, will be ignored. He says, our philosophy when it comes to integrating past player choices and world states is wherever possible, we want to avoid contradicting what has happened before. We never want to invalidate your choices. We'll come back to that because uh, I 100% disagree with that. I think that's exactly what they want to do. Uh, he then explained it has more to do with the game's setting than anything. He says, for Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, among many reasons why we moved to Northern Thetis, is it becomes a little bit more of a clean slate for us. So they literally just wanted to create their own game and then use the Dragon Age IP and name to do that. That is what it looks like. And then using some of the characters that they introduced, I guess, in Inquisition and, and Dragon Age 2, obviously, uh, with Varric. There's not as many decisions you have made up to this point that have an impact on what's happening in Northern Thetis. And we don't have to speak directly to things like who is the divine, because again, that's happening in the South. He elaborated saying there's never a sense of, oh, that decision doesn't exist, but maybe we don't touch on it in this particular title. Much like Inquisition didn't touch on every decision from Origins, much like Dragon Age 2 didn't touch on every decision from Origins. It's kind of in that same vein of we're not going to contradict it. We just may not always reference it directly. He then concluded saying, we don't want to ever imply that a decision is the wrong decision or the right decision. That's absolutely not true. We have uh, uh, comments from the game's actual lead writer that completely contradicts this. We might joke about things like, oh, you let charge uh, the Chargers die. Well, that's clearly the wrong choice. But again, it's not because it's canon. We want those stories to be personal. So he literally contradicts himself right there as well. We don't even need to go to the lead writer because he's saying that's clearly the wrong choice when he says we don't want to ever imply that a decision is the wrong <laughs> decision or the right decision. And then he goes on to say that's exactly what they do. We might joke about things like, oh, you let the charger side. Well, that's clearly the wrong decision. So uh, you are implying there are certain decisions that are wrong and right. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, don't disagree with that. I actually think that there are certain things that players would do would be wrong and would be right. So this idea uh, that they're trying to say that, that they wouldn't do that it is ridiculous because there are things that are right and wrong. And I do indeed agree with that. But the fact that they're uh, saying this and then immediately contradicting yourselves uh, kind of just shows uh, who these people are and what their character is. They can't even uh, say the truth, right? They're trying to evade it. They're trying to walk around it. Uh, but at the end of the day, they do. They do. They do say what the truth is, uh, even though they just lied about it. And so, as I said, these comments do directly contradict what the game's lead writer, Patrick Weeks, shared about the game and why he and the company chose not to allow players to use blood magic moving forward, right? Uh, and he was asked this question uh, over on Blue Sky. He says, are player specs like Shapeshifter, Bard, Blood Mage unlikely to return to the series? I know they're not in Dragon Age uh, 5, but I also know they're prob, uh, or Veil Guard, excuse me, I, but I also know they're prob 2 resource intensive anyway. Uh, either the Mage, Bard, and Dragon Age Inquisition it was cool. And I HC Bard Hawk. Thank you. Never say never. Blood magic is unlikely because we've shifted it from a power boost to really being the key to a lot of nasty stuff. We aren't interested in having heroes do. The other stuff just needs the right game. So again, clearly they don't want users uh, engaging in activities that they see as nasty stuff, wrong or evil, uh, such as blood magic. And they're not allowing players to actually do that anymore because they are trying to tell you what is right and wrong. Another user commented this. This is interesting because that means that a blood mage warden and or hawk are really, really subdued blood mages and that, and that Solus was both right and wrong on it being not inherently evil and just a tool. And Weeks said this, I think it can be ethically neutral if you only use your own blood, but after seeing it used as a required part of mind control and demon binding in Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition, it's just not a road we want the hero to walk right now. Uh, he was then asked this, do you think we will ever turn back to being allowed to do nasty stuff again? What I always loved about Dragon Age Origins in 2 was that you were able to roleplay a completely a-hole anti-hero. The good guy hero is such an overused trope, in my opinion. 
I 100% disagree. We really don't have a lot of good guy heroes at all anymore, especially in uh, what I would call uh, mainstream pop culture. Uh, in Mar Even in Marvel, you don't really see that stuff anymore, DC, et cetera. Uh, and definitely uh, not so much in video games anymore. Uh, and then Weeks responded say saying this, hero who is not, who is not a complete a-hole anti-hero is not a single trope. We give you different ways to play Rook and Veilguard, but stuff we set up as corrupting Red Larium blood magic is mostly reserved for the villains this time for clear storytelling might be different in future games. So they are clearly delineating what they believe is right and wrong. Using blood magic, uh, they say is wrong. And I, I agree, 100% agree with that. I think this is actually something um, that I don't have an issue with, but they are clearly showing certain things here that they believe are right and wrong and are trying to lead the player into buying into those as well. And that's exactly what they're admitting here. And that is why this game is so degenerate because they're pushing all kinds of disgusting, uh, sexual dis uh, disordered, sexual lifestyles, disordered, sexual behavior, etc. cetera. Um, we ha have this, um, from the game's director, uh, Corrine Bush, a man pretending to be a woman, made it clear to IGN that players have no control over whether the characters in the game begin engaging in disordered relationships. So they're clearly removing a lot of that player choice there. And uh, he explained this. For instance, we saw Harding. I, I might be playing a straight male character flirting with her, but I choose not to pursue a romance. She might get together with Tosh. So the player has no control over whether or not Harding uh, has a relationship with Tosh. So my perception, my identity has no bearing on their identities. And that comes through really strongly. So you, the only way you have, I guess, any kind of control is if you romance uh, Harding so that Harding won't be getting it on with Tosh. But that means that probably some other characters are going to be trying to do the same thing. So you don't really have any control with that. And again, this is what I'm talking about. They are trying to actually remove player control, remove player choice, remove player option when it comes to this stuff, because they're trying to push this stuff on people. They're trying to show that this is the stuff that is right. We have that perfectly explained by weeks there regarding blood magic he's explaining why you are not allowed to play use blood magic anymore and it's because they believe that is evil and wrong and they don't want the hero character the player character to be engaging in those things that they deem evil and wrong and that's exact but but they're going to allow <laughs> allow you to engage in all kinds of uh disordered sexual lifestyles because they see that stuff as uh good and right when it, it, it's not it's absolutely not it leads to destruction uh it, it leads to uh just you basically closing your heart off, hardening your heart. And, and usually things end up really, really bad for you when you engage in those types of behaviors. Uh, as far as what the game will have when it comes to past decisions players have made for their Dragon Age stories, IGN's Alex Edmund explained this. The Veil Guard, meanwhile, will allow players to select a few story decisions via tarot cards in the adventurer's past section of the character creator where you can remake your Inquisitor. Those decisions are who your Inquisitor romanced with the options... Uh, gender and lineage locked in the same way that they were in, in Inquisition, whether or not you disbanded the Inquisition and whether you vowed to stop Solus or save him. So uh, that is how John Epler explained why they aren't doing Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2, why those games are not uh, actually going to be influencing Dragon Age the Veil Guard whatsoever. And uh, I want to bring this up Share this article over on X here. You can follow me at JF Trent over there if you want to. And a uh, friend of the channel, uh, Kenobi Steak Steak Kenobi, posted this and said, because it isn't about making a dragon game at all. It is about using the brand to make an LGBTQ dating simulator full of self-inserts. And based on everything we have seen from this game, it's hard to argue with that. It is basically Dragon Age in name only, and they are indeed trying to make it an LGBTQ dating simulator rather than any kind of Dragon Age game. Sure, there is some action. You do have some of the trappings of Dragon Age, but uh, it looks like the focus of this game is indeed on uh, the relationships you have with the characters and clearly trying to push that LGBTQ plus agenda, that pansexual uh, agenda. And we know this is definitely something that they are indeed trying to push because Bush, the game's director, as I said, a man pretending to be a woman has claimed that Dragon Age is an inherently queer franchise. Uh, Bush also describes himself as a Queero, mancer, gender, something. I don't even remember. Uh, some absolutely ridiculous phrase. Uh, and he's also made clear that he was trying to push, push this stuff in the game in a dev diary on Bioware's website years ago, uh, even before we actually got to see anything 
from Veilgard outside of concept art, which I've discussed on uh, on this uh, channel before. It was like queer romancer, I don't know, something like that. I can't even remember what it was. Uh, something absolutely insane, just word salad, garbage stuff, clearly trying to promote all kinds of degeneracy. But uh, this is just more evidence that this game is going to be absolutely terrible and really is just Dragon Age in name only. And I do not think that Bioware will survive this game's release, or I definitely don't think the Dragon Age uh, franchise will survive this moving forward. Maybe they'll have to go dormant for uh, 20 years instead of 10 this time uh, before we see any kind of uh, revival. And maybe they'll get back to uh, Dragon Age Origins and what made the franchise successful in the first place. But let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, but to always speak the truth. And we should always pray for our enemies as well. That does not mean we do not oppose them. We should oppose them. We should be calling this stuff out. We should be saying no. We should not be purchasing this game. We should be telling others not to purchase this game. But that does also does not mean we uh, should also pray for these people that uh, God will soften their hearts and they will change their ways and get back to focusing on what is truly good, right, just, and beautiful.